So welcome everybody. I think everyone on the call here knows everyone else by this point. Yeah, it looks like it. Um, so welcome to another SIG meeting. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here and I'll kind of run the conversation a little bit. All right. Let me know if you need me to zoom in at all. Um, so we've got a couple of agenda items here, some updates and then some conversation around some community contributions. Um, first thing, uh, first, we usually do this. Does anyone have anything they'd like to add to the conversation before we dig in or to the agenda? All right. Sounds good, then let's let's dig right in. The first update here is about button categories and interactive states. We're gonna take a quick look at a design deck, uh, and then we're going to, uh, I think, hand the screen over to Felix for a brief demo. Then we're gonna just talk about uh, the sidebar UI a little bit, and then we'll move on. So I won't go full screen here, but at any point, stop me if, I'm, if something is not visible enough. And of course, we share this out after every call. So in the last SIG meeting, we did take a look at buttons. Um, at that point, we, we had a, a pretty different idea around how buttons are categorized. Um, there were some different um, categories. The approach to styles has remained pretty much the same, how, or the, the style groupings have remained pretty much the same in their intention, but the actual aesthetics of them has evolved a little bit. So uh, since there are some updates here, I thought I'd click through those. And if we have any conversation, uh, we can check those, we can dig into that. So. Standard buttons are, of course, um, the most common type of button throughout the interface. And we have uh, three variations rather than two in this update. Uh, we have standard buttons with text labels. Um, it, you know, without seeing them side by side, it could be pretty um, difficult to see what, if anything, has changed here. Uh, the most, most noticeable or the uh, most important thing to, to mention probably is that we solved for a visual contrast, uh, visual accessibility issue that was present in the last iteration of these standard buttons, um, where white text was not, did not have sufficient contrast against uh, the Jenkins blue color from our color palette um, by default. So what we did here is we uh, ha have decided on a treatment where uh, we've sort of, rather than muddying up the color palette and introducing an, an alternative color, uh, what we did is, um, had what we would normally use as a hover blue as the default and then oops and then we go a bit lighter upon hover it's not uh the most um expected behavior but it does help solve that accessibility issue uh, and it does help maintain um a color palette without without like i said muddying it up and, and adding a new a new item a new color with every uh, little issue that we encounter. That's a sort of behavior that we want to avoid. Otherwise, that palette loses its value really quickly. Um, so there are a couple other updates here. I think probably since the last time we looked at it, uh, text itself is a bit smaller. The height of the buttons has been reduced if, I, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, so iterations, but very much the same. Um, then we have standard buttons with icon plus text label. Uh, you get the idea, right? Essentially the same thing as what we just looked at, but these have an icon paired with them from the material design library is the intention. And then we have a large variant, which is very, very similar to the standard one. Um, in fact, I believe the, the idea is that all the interactive states would be the same, but these are a bit larger, should stand out, be a little bit more pronounced on the page. And these are usually what we find at say the bottom of forms. Uh, it didn't make a whole lot of sense to create a really distinct style for this variant. Uh, we could have pursued that, but didn't want to because, uh, and Felix, feel free to jump in there and, and correct me if I'm, sp if I'm describing it incorrectly, but my understanding is that um, this variant is hard, it's hard to, uh, to say, let's only use these at the bottom of forms, for example. It's uh, it's a treatment that can be applied in just about any plugin and it can be pulled into different places. So we didn't want to do anything too different at the bottom of forms because that treatment could appear in, in other places in other plugin UI and so didn't want to throw things off. Is that a right way of describing it, Felix? Yeah, it is. Okay, I need 
my second cup of coffee personally this morning. So anyone feel free to stop me and, and we can dig into it more. The second category, which we didn't look at last time was expandable buttons. We realized that um, the treatment for the actual menu that, that expands from the button, um, that that code affects uh, those type of drop down menus throughout all of Jenkins. So we decided that was a bit of out of scope before redesigning these buttons. And instead we just have the treatments for the button themselves. And we'll be tackling those menus as a separate component. Um, but this is the redesigned iteration. You can see it's very straightforward. It's really important, you know, not to have anything too flashy for buttons. Um, sometimes when you look at them in isolation like this, uh, these buttons can seem, it, it, uh, you know, in my own opinion, a bit, a bit drab, right? Gray, dark gray text. There's a reason for that though. The previous iteration, you might recall, these were, for, you to use an example, right? These were blue outlines, these were blue strokes. When you have um, a drop down button or an expandable button uh, with a blue stroke and it's, say, peppering a UI, there are many uh, instances of that treatment throughout the form, it can become a really distracting uh, treatment really quickly. So that's why this is really pared back. It's a conservative design, uh, but we've tested it and placed it against the form treatments. Uh, we have to be mindful of the current UI as well as where we'd like to take it. Uh, and this, this checks both of those boxes. The last thing that is new here is this idea of icon only buttons. I don't think this is something that's incredibly common right now, but this is something that we want to plan for over the long term. Um, as, as more features are built, and more plugins are built, they might want to use this sort of treatment. Um, of course, this leans really heavily because it doesn't have a text label on the implementer or the designer choosing an icon that affords that, that correct functionality, right? Um, but this essentially uses that transparent style that we saw in some of the other categories, uh, very straightforward. And I'll stop there because I've just been kind of rambling on. Does anyone have any thoughts or questions at this point? I think it's easy maybe after we, we show a demo uh, to, to consolidate all, all of these, um, all of these ex exposition. Sounds good. Okay. The last thing I'll um, show in this slide deck real quick is is just this. We've all seen this before. You know, these are items that we wanted to try and and work on by the end of April. So uh, the next thing that we'll be looking at uh, two weeks from today, and maybe I'll be able to post something and get her a little sooner than that, so we can talk about it ahead of time would be treatments for this sidebar, which is of course a really big and really important part of the interface. And um, hopefully so we will have a work in progress PR as well, hopefully. Yeah, that's that's the goal. Um, so, and that's it for this deck. Uh, I guess I'll stop sharing real quickly for you, Felix. Yeah, so I will start sharing my screen. First of all, I, 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 I said last meeting that I was going to share within a week, pro that I was probably going to share within a week buttons uh, the buttons PR. Sorry about that. I was not able to. It's much complicated than it seems. <laughs> so, um, but I think the result was really polished. Everybody seeing my screen? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So this is um, I, on the PR. There's a, a snippet of Jelly code that anybody can paste, copy and paste in a Jelly template to play around with the, the buttons. As they are right now, so one of uh, one of the things that we achieved was um, not only buttons can be styled, but also hyperlinks can be styled as buttons. These are all hyperlinks that can have a button style. So here uh, you can also see how are buttons with leading icons, trailing icons, and icon only buttons how they feel. And I wanted to show them uh, to show around different screens to see how buttons would feel. Um, I think they, they feel really good once you get used to them. Uh, it's much nicer, especially whenever you go then back to the old buttons. Um, so here we see that these buttons in this form are of a large vari uh, variant, which is nice. So here we see all, those, all of these drop down, uh, all of these default buttons. Um, it's, they are much easier on the eyes. Um, 
so drop down buttons, so everything behaves as, as usual. I think um, these plugin pages are pages that really benefit from the new buttons because they add a, a touch of color that's really interesting in my opinion. And for example, you can see it here. This is much nicer, uh, the uninstalled column, this downgrade. So this probably could be a, a link style button, but yeah. So you can navigate, uh, see what, what's up. I think the, it makes the page um, the pages less sad, if that makes sense. Also, for example, here we can add a new token uh, in the API, we can generate, yeah. So, I, Maybe it's because I'm biased, but I I like it. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you, we have the delete buttons. As Joe said, this is not our primary color. I, I'm sure we will talk about this later uh, from what I've seen in the agenda, but we needed to, for accessibility reasons, to go with a darker blue. But, well, it's not that bad. Um, I, something that I wanted to touch, is I created this PR. On this PR, there's a link to the um, there's a link to the Jira issue. And in the Jira ticket, I talk about the CSS API. I go into a bit of detail uh, what did I choose? Because, for example, um, I did not style buttons by default. I kept buttons within the UI button classes. I don't know if I should add default styles for buttons, as I did for input types, uh, input buttons. Well, I encourage everyone to take a look at this CSS API specification. And if anyone has any idea how to document this, I would appreciate. Or maybe we should ask in the talks, uh, Gitter, because I think this is something that we should document. Yeah, it's definitely not something that should be just left in a Jira ticket or a PR for documenting. Uh, yeah, indeed it's not. I mean, for me, documenting this it can can be a matter of three four hours. It can go a long way to, you know, to to, to enable people to use uh, buttons with icons, buttons without, you know. So I, I needs, appreciate any yeah. any ideas on this. It needs some sort of um, component library, dot really, for it. Something that has the CSS and and, um, and shows you the CSS that's needed and the rendering. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, I agree with. I don't that. think we have anything appropriate right now, really. Um, no, we don't. No, I wanted to set up a storybook, uh, but I, maybe I will take a look into it in the future, in the near future. It is really complicated, especially getting the adjuncts to behave. Um, something also that I want to mention is people will look into the PR. Is that I removed some Yahoo UI. Uh, calls uh, styles from the from the um, sorry from the layout.jelly file. So mm, that's uh, because I styled the buttons from scratch. Basically, buttons are now a clean slate. So I think that removed a bit of quite technical depth. So yeah, I welcome any any feedback. So yeah, as always. So one question: It didn't. From the sure. PR, it didn't look like you had added any of the um, uh, any of the like icons or anything into any of the existing buttons. Is there anywhere that could fit in as an example? So if you scroll down a little bit, you've got like the leading icons or the um, yeah any of the SVGs. And is there anywhere that would be appropriate just to add so that we're actually using it? I, I don't think there are any buttons using them. I don't, if I understand correctly your question, I don't think yeah. there are any buttons using this correctly. I just want to say that we we have enabled this. Okay. Because, for example, we have an adding a specification that we can have a button with an icon that's a specific size for the normal button and another specific size for for the large button. So you get styles of three. And I did this for SVG icons um, and also I tags for for they, those font awesome users. Do the help icons use the question mark link that you've got in the leading icons section? Can you please talk a bit? Can you please repeat and talk a bit louder? And um, do the help icons use the new style help icon, or was it using the old? I can't. I, I didn't check that um, when I was looking. Like this that, one. Yeah. Uh, this one I just took out of the material SVG. So 
you can see here I pasted this jelly snippet uh, that, that basically generates this. And I'm using SVG, the SVG icon helper with, with a material UI icons, basically, if that answers your question. Uh, no, I was just asking, do, do you plan to change? So if you go to manage Jenkins. Yep. Wait a second, please. Well, oh, even, even that, the job page you were just on had it. And then configure system. Um, the job page has it. If you don't want to wait, you can just go back to the simple Java Maven app. Mm, okay. Ah, uh, so you and mean this? Doing... Yeah. Well, yeah. Those probably could be styled. Um, I don't know where those are generated, but those could those are prime candidates for conversion from to uh, to actual buttons. Indeed. Yeah. And, uh, we can. I can leave it as a community contribution. Also, right now we only have a a single style for icon buttons, which is an which is the same as the hyperlink one. But if anybody can can add uh, want to add um, a normal gray color text color but, uh, icon icon buttons, uh, other styles, uh, we can I can help out anybody to uh, to keep it consi consistent with the icon cat uh, catalog and palette. I think there's a chat message. Uli. Maybe I, I will, I, I'm sure we can document it there, Uli. Um, <laughs> but I don't know if what what the proper section is. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. can go there, but we should make a new section there about UI things. So we have a lot of yeah. sections. So I think a good section would be about UI things. So what to choose for widgets and etc. The color palette. These things are, I think, good points in our uh, documentation here on the website. Yeah, I'm just wondering if there's better tools for design and so being able to have the CSS and have the rendered components. Um, possibly we just grab the Jenkins CSS at build time and then add the Jenkins CSS onto this page. Yeah, um, something that um, I think we can, I, I would like to set up a storybook. I will think about something, but it will take me a while. So the problem is that it's, uh, setting something up is easier if you have the CSS and JavaScript in the same place. But the problem we have here are the adjuncts. Basically, they make um, uh, form CSS, drop down CSS, all, all those pieces of code, they are all over the place. So it's that young files. So that, that's what makes it difficult to create such catalog. I don't know if that makes sense. I can look into, into seeing if I can blueprint a catalog and then share it with everybody. Okay, is there any other questions? Okay, great. Um, I will stop sharing then and go, uh, go back to Joe. Sure. All right. So the next line item here was just sort of a, a comment, um, maybe a couple of comments from myself and Felix. I mentioned earlier that the next uh, big piece of the UI that we're looking at is the sidebar. And I hope to share some designs and some mocks with you all over the course of the coming week uh, over in Gitter. Um, I, I think, I don't know, is there anything more you'd like to say about that, Felix, other than that's coming up next and some of the things we were thinking about there? Um, we are, we have identified that we'll probably tackle the sidebar in two stages. Uh, first the hyperlinks, uh, sorry, the task hyperlinks on the top, and then the panels on the bottom. The, for the build queue, executors, build history, all those stuff. So, and I'm a bit concerned, especially about, no, no, we will not touch, touch icons on the, on the sidebar. 
Um, I'm a bit concerned about those panels for the executors because I, I have identified that we have the executors build queue, build history. So, but I don't know w which open source plugins use uh, um, contribute with custom panels. So if anybody knows by heart any plugin that creates a sidebar panel, please con or does anything weird in the sidebar. <laughs> Please uh, send me, give me a message and a heads up, and I will look into it to make sure we don't break anything. For sure. Awesome. I think I think that's it for that topic for now. Uh, and then we had some community contribution chats here. Uh, so some questions and ideas about the color palette. Um, does someone want to uh, speak to that? Uh, whoever added it, I suppose. Yes, I forgot my name to edit here. So uh, it's, no yeah, problem. the point is from me. Um, uh, I'm just uh, headed over to the new Jenkins UI and now I'm trying to convert my plugins to use the new color schema. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, I started with your document uh, about the colors and the first thing I noted, uh, the colors are just, uh, yeah, there's no color numbers given there. So it would help me as a plugin developer if I can get the actual numbers for the colors which I should use. Absolutely. Um, and maybe it would make sense if we have the palette as a standalone document, because I think currently it is uh, somehow integrated in another document. So maybe it would be good to have it as a standalone document or yeah, something absolutely. on the Jenkins homepage. So this is our new palette and please use the palette for everything. That sounds good to me and I totally agree. Um, it's one of those, I think this is one of the first times that someone is is looking at this project and then trying to, to reference the things we're trying to establish to implement something or build something new. So that's awesome. And I will definitely uh, put that together for you in short order and share that with you. Mm -hmm. And while I looked at the palette, I, I noticed, I think two things, I'm not sure about it. So the first thing is, uh, a lot of plugins uh, are using charts to show some information. So the unit, uh, unit tests plugin. So we need some more colors, I think, than the colors you have already shown. So I have no idea how to present colors. So this is just uh, an idea for you as a designer. Uh, how do we or how can we get some more colors for our charts? What are good colors? Or I think the colors must match somehow your palette. And I am not a designer, so I'm just a programmer. So it would be very helpful for me if we also have some more colors which plugin authors can use in charts. I think that's fantastic feedback. I totally agree. and especially with a palette, it's the kind of thing we're going to encounter continuously, right? Um, so this is a great example and, and it does need to be expanded for that. Um, mm -hmm. Let me follow up with you in Gitter about this, but yeah, we'll make it happen. Okay. Um, think... One thing that um, maybe I can, I can elaborate. I've been entertaining the possibility um, to, in the near future, have the possibility of setting allowing customization and setting the colors for hyperlinks, uh, buttons, and everything. Just at least some basic customization using CSS variables, so that that would make easier uh, for. Yeah, I will. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, that will make easier for for especially for people to um, expand the UI, basically uh, changing the primary color or changing, for example, the background color for the secondary button, whatever. So uh, that's something I'm still, it's a bit of a project for me, but this could be, these variables could be used and it's something that customization that works on very, basically in every browser except Internet Explorer. So that's a possibility I'm in entertaining at the moment, fully. Yeah, that's good. Um, because 
this is something we already have that someone is installing a new theme and then the colors are changing for all plugins. So I think it would be helpful if this is going in the new releases as well. So yeah. someone installs a new theme and then every plugin behaves correctly and not only Jenkins core. Yeah, and it's also um, using CSS variables, basically mm -hmm. needs, needs lots of work, okay? Lots of work, so it's not immediate. Mm -hmm. It's the first step towards, uh, it's the best way to achieve a dark mode, mm -hmm. basically, because you just swap the, the variables and then if you set the background of the page as a variable, if you set the text color as a variable, everything, you can just tune up and create dark mode configurations. Okay. And I mentioned in this because there's a community PR for, for open. Uh, but there's a task, a digit issue for that. Okay, uh, team, I'm looking at. Uh, sorry, uh, Adrian has a question for the PR about. Sorry if I. Uh, the, the, uh, sorry, did we finish talking about this, Uli? Yeah, for me it's good. Thank you. <laughs> okay, it's loading. Uh, if you would give me a minute, let me answer something. Uh, Tim just raised a question that from Adrian uh, that on the PR that says, I know this might be out of scope, but we are still using UI prefix when those classes, if I recall correctly, came from the Yahoo UI library. As we are not using anymore, maybe we could rename the classes. What do you think? So. Well, something I thought that was some of the first decisions I needed to take when dealing with the buttons. And the problem is that basically the current button structure, which is a span tag with a UI button class and then a button within it, it's used across all plugins, basically across the whole ecosystem. You cannot just not support that. Uh, basically, it's, it's legacy, but it, it's what's here. Also, the, um, you cannot, we cannot stop using Yahoo UI button naming because drop downs, uh, menus, all those sorts of yeah. buttons uh, that are dealing with JavaScript use the Yahoo UI classes. Yeah, I've so, had before. Yeah, I needed to embrace them, basically. I have an option, to, I had the option to create another API, but. Yeah, so you no could have a new API, API. But, you, but you still need it for the drop downs, unless you migrate the drop down code to the new code, but then some plugin yeah. might be relying on, on it. Yeah, I, I didn't want to, I, I wanted to have effective new uh, changes and I, I honestly didn't want to deal with uh, coming, on with an, uh, coming up with a new API that would need to coexist with existing one and uh, would need, could, could not be used for menus, for drop downs, for anything. So it would be a, it would never, it would never replace the other one. Something that I'm not satisfied with is that I don't style the buttons directly. I expect the buttons to be within an, a span tag. So maybe I could add a, um, a, an option to not wrap the buttons in the future, mm -hmm. in a future PR. Mm -hmm. But maybe I'm waiting for community feedback on that one. I will answer. I I'm giving this this explanation here, but I will also answer it in the PR. So, what, are there any thoughts on this? On this uh, CSS It'd be nice API? Nice if we could. Yeah, It'd be nice if we could do it without have an option to do it without the span, because um, you don't have to handle the complicated drop down with all that JavaScript. In most cases. Um, yeah. If we could have a nicer API or simpler API for new code, um, keeping in mind that drop downs are going to have to use um, the legacy code, could be nice to have it available. But if it's a lot of work, I would. I, I don't know. Uh, to be honest, I, I don't know. I will pro. I could probably be be able to to instead of, for example, to style the buttons as hyper as the hyperlinks with button class uh, with a class of U UI button and everything. But they really, really want to avoid coming up with a new API interface because, I don't know, it, it will just never coexist with, it, we will never, maybe we can have the, a bootstrap-like interface, but it would complicate the CS code too much for me, in my opinion. But maybe, maybe, maybe I can work on removing the span tag indeed. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Anything more to, to say about that for now? And if not, I think we could probably move on to our, our next item on the list here. Slayton, you want to speak to that one? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I uh, just opened the breadcrumb PR. I mean, um, we're trying to um, rewrite it in Java rather than let um, the your jelly code handle it. So Felix told me to get it up uh, meeting so I can get some initial feedback on it. Uh, I don't know exactly how to test it because um, I don't know where exactly would the, I mean, breadcrumbs are generated in the jelly. So I've added some of the interface methods, but um, I, I'm not really sure how to add tests or something to it. So I could get any feedback or any, I mean, that would be really helpful. So, um, could you, sorry, I think maybe you're, can you sp maybe speak up a little bit, I'll turn my volume. Could you reiterate sort of, uh, the, what are you looking for feedback on this one? Is that it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was looking on how to exactly test the changes that I made because um, uh, I just refactored it into um, making our code generate the breadcrumbs rather than, um, rather than they just getting pulled up from the jelly code. Um, initially, the jelly code just, uh, I mean, they just generated the, um, the breadcrumbs using the ancestor, um, I mean, sort of some loop where it just iterated through the ancestors and then all of the breadcrumbs are uh, updated. So I was, so I refactored that into Java, but I'm not exactly sure how that fits in or how do I, I mean, test it out on the UI or how do I add tests to it? So any feedback or something that, that would be really appreciated. Good stuff. Um, if, if anyone has anything to, to say on that right now, that's awesome. And if you haven't already, I'm a little behind on catching up there, Slade, and I would I would post this over in Gitter too for for a bit more yeah. exposure as well. Yeah. yeah, no issues, no issues. Uh, I'm not asking for immediate feedback. Uh, feedback would be delayed. Uh, so it's it, I just brought it up because um, I mean Felix suggested that it would be a good thing to bring for up sure. in the UX. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I I cannot speak of because I I basically have no idea how how to have a global global modules. To uh, how to access global modules to a gel through a jelly template, but they will um, I'm basing I'm basing uh, through the UX6 channel, where I think it's a nice start, uh, where the basically uh, where the call to the uh, this is uh, I'm sending you the link to where the interface iterates over the loop with the breadcrumbs basically. Mm. Uh, just. On getting access to things globally in Jelly, normally it's anything in the functions class is available to Jelly, I think. And then you access it by H dot yeah. method name. It's the normal, the normal way to make something easily accessible. There's other ways, but. Yeah, okay. Awesome. Anyone have anything else for, for today's meeting? Whoa, whoa, not everybody at once. Calm down. <laughs> yeah. All right, straightforward call. Thank you, everyone, um, for your time today, and uh, we'll see you in Gitter. Yep. Awesome. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, see guys. you. Bye. Bye-bye.